Good evening, one and all. We welcome you all to the international webinar series on holistic health, well-being, and sustainable development, 2024, commemorating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotso, nation celebrating 76 years of independence, and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2013 as part of awareness and campaigns in collaboration with Sri Holistic Health Foundation India and Sri Research Institute Center for Art, Sciences and Wellbeing. Before we start our sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. With the blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with today's commemorations. Today is commemorated as Poetry and the Creative Mind Day in U.S., which takes place every year on April 19 to honor the bright minds of poetry and the craft. It is a day that shines out light on how poetry and other creative mediums have helped shape and color many lives throughout the history. Whether it may be songs, haikus, limericks, sonnets, elegies, or epics, poetry has the power to affect even the hardest hearts and is an example of how far human creativity and expression can stretch beyond its limits. Poetry as a term and medium originated centuries open cent upon centuries ago, starting from folk songs and takes that would later be passed down and developed multiple times into the form that we know today. Through poetry and the arts, people can be open to ideas on what is possible and can shine a light on the state of society. It plays a major role in every culture because of its ability to deliver stories, ideas, viewpoints, and other valuable information in an impactful manner. Poems have been used as tools of revolution, dissidence, and love. Various regimes across history have been challenged and toppled as a result of public reawakening through poetry. Many of us are exposed to poetry from an young age, whether it may be from nursery rhymes, songs and poems, and poets that we study in school, from the playful stories of Suez and the visceral innocence of Shel Silverstein to William Shakespeare, hefty sonnets and emotional political prose of Pablo Neruda. Poems can come in all shapes and sizes, but every one of them can carve a place in our hearts alone long after we visit and read them. However, one can say that every form of the art is poetry. Song lyrics are considered poetry in itself, as not only do they rhyme, they are an expression of one's deepest emotions and thoughts. Painting and cinema are forms of visual poetry that convey meaning through their images, methods and depth. Today, there exists an amalgam of poetic forms and structures, including haikus, sonnets, acrostics, concrete, limericks, songs, jokes, epics, and many others. 
So poetry and the Creative Mind Day celebrates the creative mind in general, honoring everyone who takes part in the art form and the spirit of putting this mind into practice. So the world oldest poem is written in around 2100 BC to 2000, sorry, 1200 BC in the West. The epic of Giglamesh is thought to be written on this day. But even before that, we have a lot of uh, epics like which have been written after they have happened, like Mahabharata, Ramayana, they are still earlier dated. The world most recognizable poet and playwright Shakespeare in the West was born in uh, 1564. The Imagist movement gives birth to modern poetry, which rejects the long-winded romantic aesthetics of the past in the favor of more concise forms that we know today. In 1912, Bobby Dylan becomes the first musician to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2016. Psychological studies have shown that poetry can help increase creativity levels as it helps one structure their own forms of narration, parameters and metaphors while also compelling writers to expand their vocabulary. Writing poetry is an exercise in cognitive simulation and can also explain one's emotional development in the process. There are various forms of self-expression. You can express yourself through a variety of means. And writing is only one of them. Forms of expression include the clothes that you wear, the music and the films that you consume, the posts that you upload on social media, or even the way you talk while self-expression merely means showing the world your identity and you know the best how to express yourself. So 19th century English poet Matthew Arnold is credited with the saying, poetry is a criticism of life. His view is that poetry worthiness comes from its ability to portray the facets of life, human nature, cultures, or civilizations by effectively portraying the beauty and the truths. So read your favorite poems. Express yourself through your preferred art form and listen the lyrics that speak the most to you. So the longest poem in the history is Mahabharata, which has over 2 lakh verses and 1.8 million words. And we have Ramayana with 2,400, sorry, 24,000 verses and many such epic poems in India which stands the longest and the oldest in the world. Descent Chilean poet Neruda preferred to write in greening as the color symbolizes hope for this people. Shel, Shel Silverstein's world is vast and playful, celebrated children's author and poet, won a Grammy in 1970 for Penny. Johnny Crash song, A Boy Named Sue. American poet Annie Brad, Bradstreet's 1650s book, The Tenth Muse, was the first female written book to have published in the West. And metrophobia is a term for the fear of poetry, something that should have fear. Poetry and the Creative Mind Day celebrates an art form that can strongly tap into the consciousness it stimulates our imagination as well as evokes emotions towards people or the goings on around us and helps us to see the world from a perspective outside of ourselves. Forming this kind of thinking is crucial 
if you want to truly understand the word. The day celebrates creativity as a whole. Creativity is an important aspect of how living beings live their lives. If we are not exposed to the arts, we can be in danger of developing a narrow-minded view of the world. Or worse, we might not be able to properly understand how human emotion works. All forms of art are a display of our complexities as beings and can show us that there is more to what we see before our eyes. It honors talented poets, poetry and the creative mind also celebrates the many poets that have moved our hearts and minds. It is a day of truly recognize how people like T.S. Eliot, May, Maya Angelou, Robert Frost, Oscar Wilde, Charles Bukowski and Alien Ginsberg can tune many people into their words and ideas. So these people have written words that have touched millions to show the best human creativity at its play. It is only that they are related. Today is also commemorated as Rice Ball Day in US. Rice Ball Day, which is an annual Kusain event observed on April 19, this day honors one of the most well-known and delectable Japanese dishes of all time, the rice ball. The word rice ball refers to a clump of rice formed into a spherical shape. It does, however, come in a variety of shapes, including the triangular one. It also varies in texture and flavor according to the type of rice used and the items added to it. If you are already a fan of rice balls, rice ball day is just another reason to indulge in what is undoubtedly your favorite food. If you aren't be ready for the culinary fest, that will blow your mind. We know, especially in India, especially in South India, rice is most preferred. Across India and even across the world also, India exports a lot of rice to various countries. So rice is used across the world. So there is also, even in India, we prepare rice balls. And even by eating also, we, you know, make a ball-like structure and eat. Which is common in childhood. And even adults also, some people still continue to make balls, ball-like structure and eat. And some just mix and eat. So it depends on person to person. And especially we prepare offerings also. And this is uh, relevant to more in a Japanese context. You know, especially the origins of uh, rice balls in the West can be traced back to 11th century. For generations, the rice ball has been recognized as an essential component of Japanese kusai, particularly during lunches and picnics. So local names, Locally, it is known as onigiri, which means to cling on to. A rice ball can be any type of uh, kusain made from rice. The material is then molded, compressed or otherwise mixed to make a ball shape. Rice balls are especially popular in Asia and many other cultures where rice is consumed. It was universal meal. with several extraordinary properties, not the least of which was its capacity to form an airtight seal and hence protect and preserve meat kept with it. The rice is dipped in vinegar to assist it to connect and form the previously stated airtight seal, but an application of soy, soy sauce destroys these bonds and make a loose rice dish combined with the items it's filled with Throw that back into the frying pan and reheat it. Traditionally, plain rice balls with no spices or additions were the norm. So you can try either with plain rice balls or you can use your creativity to make into different dishes. So the Japanese love a variety of flavors and styles of rice balls. So they prefer to combine seasonings and condiments into plain rice rather than placing them within it. 
So now they started experimenting with different shapes also, not just the round spherical ones. So until the 1980s, all onigiri had to be handcrafted, making this a rare and expensive treat that they could be only purchased in Japanese restaurants. So earlier they were, these rice balls were used to be made by the hands. But all of the changes in the 1980s with the introduction of machine that manufactured triangle onigiri and the method has been constantly refined since then. So making mass produced onigiri available to the public. So now it is widely available and the price also has come down. So rice balls are consumed at picnics and when traveling throughout the Ayan era in the West in 1885, Oh, sorry, 1185, the revolution of the rice balls, processed seaweeds becomes available to the general public and people wrap rice balls in seaweeds to preserve them in 1704. So the machine for making triangular onigiri is created instead of rolling, the filming inside and flavoring is placed in a hole in the onigiri and concealed with nori. So in 1980, and rice balls became a comfort in many Asian nations since rice is eaten every day since 2010. So onigiri can be kept unrefrigerated for up to six hours due to salt in the rice and should be eaten at room temperature or slightly warm. And it also depends on the external environment. So to keep the rice balls from getting soggy, wrap them individually in a wax paper or plastic wrap, store the nori separately and wrap it around the onigiri just before eating. So that is the best way to keep rice balls fresh. And rice balls are produced with white rice, which is heavy in carbs, yet in the mainstay in many people's diet due to its nutritional value. So it is healthy. So make your own rice balls, Host a rice ball theme party. Rice balls can be filled with salmon flakes, tuna salad, seafood salad, konbur, kumbeshi, tempura, natto. Uh, even though it is basically a traditional vegetarian dish, but people also make it a non-vegetarian. But the original dish is always vegetarian. The Japanese name for the rice ball is onigiri. The most common form is a triangle. However, there are now more options such as heart shape or rectangular shapes and so on. The dried seaweed is usually wrapped around the bottom of the onigiri, allowing you to hold the onigiri steadily. But some people wrap the entire onigiri in dried seaweed. So it can be used with white rice or also fried rice is now new variety. White rice with spices, sprouting brown rice or uh, takikomi, gohan, uh, white rice cooked with different things like uh, peas, mushrooms and so on. Now we have multiple varieties available. So as this has a long history, we adore rice balls and it's a day to experiment to try new flavors. Today is also commemorated as Refresh Your Goals, Goals Day in US. And it is a perfect opportunity to re-evaluate and focus on your personal goals. Refresh Your Goals Day reminds us to take action to renew and rejuvenate our health and wellness aspirations. Today, Albertson Safeway, one of the largest food and drug retailers in the United States, supports and empowers people in reaching and pursuing their health and wellness goals by celebrating the day with a healthy twist. Through Albertson's Safeway Sincere Health Platform, you can monitor your progress while participating in challenges that boost motivation and help you on track. Albertson's Safeway is working with Apple Health to help Americans everywhere reach wellness 
through the platform, users can connect their Apple Watch or iPhone and receive additional points for reaching their personal goals every day. So we invite everyone on this day to celebrate that and take advantage on this special day to recommit to your health. Wellness aspirations together, we can make it a positive change towards a healthier future. Today is also commemorated as National Oklahoma City Bombing Commemoration Day in US. Annually, this day aims at honoring the deceased, injured, and volunteers when the devastated event occurred. Two anti-government extremists, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, perpetrated the terrorist attack. They did this with white supermassives and right-wing terrorist sympathies. The bombing happened in at uh, nine at ninth hour, two minutes a.m. at the Alfred P. Murray Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and killed at least one sixty-eight people, injured more than six eighty others, and destroyed more than one third of the building. So Timothy. McVay, an ex-army soldier and security guard, parked a rented rider truck in the front of Alfred P. Murray Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City on April 1995. On April 19th, he decided to commit mass murder there. The bomb was powerful one. It consisted of a deadly cocktail of agricultural fresh fertilizer, diesel fuel and other chemicals. McVeigh got out of the rented car with the bomb inside, locked the door, and headed towards his gateway. He ignited one time the fuse, the another at 9 to a.m., and the bomb exploded. A third of the building had been reduced to rubble in just a few seconds, with many floors flattened. The surrounding area looked devastated. More than 300 nearby buildings were damaged or destroyed. Dozens of cars were incinerated. The consequences of human beings were still more devastating. 168 souls were lost, including 19 children, with several hundred more injured. It was the worst act of terrorism in the United States history. The FBI quickly arrived at the scene to support rescue efforts and investigate the facts. There were clues in the area they found on April 20, thanks to the rear axle of the rider truck. The vehicle identification number was traced at a body shop in Junction City, Kansas. Employees helped the FBI quickly compose a composite driving of the man who had rented the van. FBI agents started to show the sketch around the town, and local hotel employees supplied a name, Tim McVeigh. Today is also commemorated as National North. Dakota Day in US as it brings to mind the culture, landscape, tourist sites, food and everything there is love about North Dakota. North Dakota is also known as Peace Garden State and is known to grow more sunflowers than any other state in US. It has one national grassland and 18 state parks. It also houses a lot of monuments such as world's largest buffalo located at the frontier village in Jamestown. A lot of celebrities over the years have North Dakota backgrounds, making the state of breeding ground for good talents as well. North Dakota has been known by many names over the years, such as Flicker Tail State because of the pleasure of squirrels, there to Rough Rider State in the honor of Brigade, that fought in the Spanish-American War alongside the 26th President of the United States of America, Theodore Roosevelt, to the Peace Garden State to celebrate the International Peace Garden, which was established in 1932 to honor the lasting peace between the United States and Canada. The International Peace Garden overlaps both nations. So Native Americans were the original settlers in North Dakota, thousand years ago and then came the first Europeans who explored the area 
in the 18th century and established some trade with the natives. The major tribes then were the Manjan, Hidatsa, Arikara, Siox, and Chepura. In the 19th century, the area of what is now known as North Dakota was part of Minnesota Territory and the Dakota Territory, which then led to the North Dakota gaining statehood in 1889. After gaining statehood a bit to attract immigrants, the state officials broadcast widely pamphlets and newspaper accounts celebrating the myth of North Dakota which promised the American dream and some other attractive incentives. It worked well as settlers came by 1910 and with the largest numbers comprising German Americans, Scandinavian Americans and Americans from the East Coast. So North Dakota's economy since its early days have been heavily based on the production of agricultural products ranging from livestock farming such as cattle rearing to crop farming such as wheat and flaxseed. This is where this very much helped by the railroads in the state. Today is also commemorated as National Hanging Out Day in US. As we are expecting a vibrant, colorful, carnival-like celebration with all kinds of linens and clothes hanging on the clothes lines. Clothes hang in the front and backyards in the neighborhood, dry in the sun and wind. It's not a fashion statement or to displace one's wardrobe, but to show support for energy conservation and environmental preservation. Many people celebrate this day by hanging out their washed clothes in open to mark the day. In 1995, a New Hampshire-based environmentalist group called Project Laundry List, founded by Alexander Lee, came up with the National Hanging Out Day. Lee heard Helen Galdicott make a speech at the symposium in Middlebury College, enticing people with the benefits of air drying laundry and cold water washing. Lee has since taken up the task to encourage this practice and this day dedicated to the cause of mobilizing people to ditch dryers and hand their clothes in open and is celebrated and This initiative primarily aims to promote social awareness and encourage you to better take care of your clothes while at the same time taking care of environment. Today is also commemorated as National Garlic Day in US. Egyptians worshipped garlic as God and even used it as currency. Garlic supposedly gave strength to the Greek athletes and warriors, warded off the evil eye and protected maidens from evil nymphs and vampires, Draculas. So the garlic bread and garlic fries for starters are strongly garlic as we do celebrate with us on April 19th. Garlics are very good for health as it can be sweet through Caramelization and roasting, it can be buttery and savory through sautering, it can be pungent and sharp through slicing it raw. No matter how you slice, sort or roast, garlic is truly really multifaceted plant. Several studies have shown that garlic can reduce blood pressure and lower cholesterol, both of which help improve circulation. But we are not done. It's also an inflammatory food which helps ease heartburn and ulcers. You can dump salt by tablespoon onto your food for a quick infusion of flavor. Drop the salt and pick up the garlic and it's a great way to add bold taste to your dishes without adding extra sodium or calories. It's especially great for making masking the bitter taste of many vegetables. Garlic 
is the secret to getting kids to actually eat their veggies. Today is also commemorated as National Dog Parent Appreciation Day in US. This day is dedicated to all incredible, hardworking dog parents who look after their pups and great care and responsibility. While being a dog parent is one of the greatest joys in the world, it is also a time-consuming and detail-oriented task that is no easy feat. We must use this day to appreciate those who fulfill these responsibilities and challenges of being a dog patient and give beautiful, wholesome lives to the pups of the world. While it is Dogs are believed to be descendants of ancient wolves and continue to have resemblance with modern-day wolves. The domestication of dogs, however, did not come into place at the beginning of their existence. Canine domestication began between 27,000 and 40,000 years ago. As feral wolves are thought to have drawn to human settlements to scavenge for leftover food, they began to travel alongside nomads over time and a sort of natural selection. But domestication emerged. According to the studies, China, the Middle East and the Europe were among the first regions to the domesticate modern-day dogs. Since the dogs have carved out a unique place for themselves in the society and our hearts, they serve as emotional support, protectors and even family members for us. They require care, attention in exchange for all the love and joy bring into our lives. And this is where the dog parents come into picture. So from rigid food restrictions and schedules to uncontrollable and often unpredictable bathroom habits, dogs need their human parents to remain disciplined and healthy. Ensuring your dog is groomed regularly and doesn't eat anything that are not supposed to can be tedious and requires significant time and effort from the dog parents. This can be even more challenging for the parents who work and have to spend substantial time away from home. Being a dog parent is a lot of responsibility and requires sufficient time, energy and resources. So National Dog Parent Appreciation Day is a day to remind these parents that their love and energy are appreciated by all and they deserve all the puppy snuggles in the world for their hard work. Dogs can smell 40 times better than human beings and they have an exceptional sense of smell. Dogs can be better swimmers than humans at times and they are super athletic. Some dogs are capable of outrunning cheetahs and they are very quick. Dogs have a dominant left or right paw just like humans and they make a choice. Dogs can hear frequencies that are substantially higher and lower than what humans can hear and they have amazing hearing. Dog parents are caring, dog parents work hard, and dog parents are responsible. So today, we are also commemorating National Cat Lady Day in Canada. So embrace your kitties and give your cat some cat name. That critter brings you joy, but that's not all. Pets not only steal our hearts, but they also help to improve. General cardiovascular health by lowering cortisol, cholesterol, blood pressure levels. April 19th is the National Cat Lady Day. A cat lady's reputation has gone a long way since medieval Europe when a woman's love of cats was met with suspicion and even disdain. Since then, the cat woman stereotype has evolved from a negative to a popular one that many modern cat ladies proudly bear. Cats are carnivorous, little hairy creatures with four legs, a tail, and claws that people have domesticated as pets from ancient times. Even though they are descended from African wildcat and used to catch vermin, the first uh, historical record of cats was discovered in the ancient civilization of Egyptian civilization in the West. 
We all seem to associate cats with Egyptians because of their adoration and worship of cats as dogs, so as gods. During the first dynasty, Mafdet was the first known cat deity and he was regarded as guardian against snakes, scorpions and evil. Therefore, cats were not only deities but also protectors. A cat lady is a cultural archetype or a stock figure who is typically depicted as a woman, a middle-aged or old spinster or a widow with a large number of cats. The phrase may be derogatory or it may be welcome fondly, depending on the context. The normal derogatory adjective crazy may be prefixed to cat lady to signify either a derogatory or a hilarious or endearing label. Some writers, celebrities and artists have embraced the term crazy cat lady to denote an animal lover or rescuer who cares for one or more cats and is psychologically sound. A 2019 study revealed no differences in anxiety, depression or relationship experiences between cat owners and non-cat owners. So we suggest that our findings are thus not consistent with the characterization of cat owners as unhappy, anxious or having problems with human relations. However, a separate 1983 study discovered that pet owners kite scored higher than non-owners on social sensitivity and interpersonal trust. However, there was no appreciable difference between dog and cat owners. Today is also commemorated as National Amaretto Day in US which is a rich Italian almond flavored drink, which has proudly delighted countless taste buds for centuries. As it's uh, made from a blend of apricot canals, bitter almonds, peach stones or almonds, armato traces, it's origin to Sarano. The sweet almondy treat with a tinge of vanilla and slightly bitter aftertaste cons comes with a world of goodness, spicing foods and drinks in its unique flavor. Today is also commemorated as landing of the 33 Patriots Day in Uruguay. It honors, it honors the first step towards Uruguayan independence when in 1825 a military group called the 33 Orientals valiantly crossed the river and put down their flag in a region of war between Uruguay and Brazil, thus swearing to gain the independence of the country and to fight until it was finally done. A few months later, Uruguay effectively claimed its independence and later on kept fighting for Brazilian recognition until it was granted in 1828. Today is also commemorated as John Parker Day, which is celebrated on April 19th every year. A farmer and mechanic, John Parker, was chosen as French and Indian War veteran as a captain of about 70 volunteer militia men in his hometown of Lexington, Massachusetts. On the fateful morning in April 1775, events unfolded and a set up group of colonists on a quest for freedom that earned Captain John Parker a place in the history books and earned him the special day. Today is also commemorated as Humorous Day in US is a day dedicated to finding humor in whatever situation comes our way. No matter how difficult it is a day that encourages us to look on the bright side of life, it is a reminder that we can have a good time with humor and laughter, which is said to be best medicine. Humorous day was inspired by National Humor Month and as such falls in April too. Humor has many benefits and plays an important role in our overall health. 
it allows people to breathe in more fresh air and stimulates the functioning of their lungs and respiratory system. When you laugh hysterically, you are releasing physical tension from muscles in your body. Laughter has also been shown to improve heart, heart health by boosting the heart rate while simultaneously lowering blood pressure. Natural painkillers are produced by your body when you laugh. The immune system is strengthened as a result of extensive, extensive laughter, making you more immune to diseases in general. By giggling, you are raising number of antibody-producing cells in your body and increasing the efficiency of your T-cells. Humor provides comfort and relief from physical pain as well as the assists in the reduction of stress. From a social standpoint, aside from bringing people together, humor has always been shown to improve conversation quality and help people manage emoticons like worry and fear and come to terms with grief. Dutch American, today is also commemorated as Dutch American Friendship Day which is observed on April 19th annually to commemorate the start of diplomatic relationships between the United States and the Netherlands. The Netherlands was the first country to recognize the independence of United States of America. In 1782, John Adams, the second president of the United States, was received by the States General in the Hague as Minister Plenipotentiary of the United States of America. On the same day, John Adams brought a house in the Hague, which became the first American embassy in the world. John Adams was a remarkable public uh, political philosopher who served as the second president of the United States from 1797 to 1801 after serving as the first vice president under President George Washington. So John Adams was admitted by the States General of Dutch Republic on April 19, 1782 as a minister of the United States of America. Thanks to that, he obtained the second diplomatic recognition of the United States as an independent nation. In the same year, Adam signed the first treaty of uh, amity and commerce between the Netherlands and the United States as America's first ambassador to the Netherlands. This treaty helped the United States to take its rightful place in the world as a sovereign state. The agreement strengthened the economic ties between Netherlands and the United States that started in the 17th century. So in 1982, President Ronald Reagan re designated this day as Dutch American Friendship Day. He explained that our relationship is the United States' longest unbroken peaceful relationship with any foreign country. The relationship between two nations remains strong today as evidenced by their robust economic ties and joint efforts in the international and NATO missions. The U.S. and the Netherlands have values in common worth celebrating. This day commemorates the 4.5 million Americans who have Dutch heritage. It also honors the sacrifices the U.S. has made to secure our freedom in the Netherlands. Today is also commemorated as Congenital Diaphragmatic Hernia Action Day in U.S., Congenital diaphragmatic hernia or CDH in short is a condition that occurs when the diaphragm, a thin sized sheet of muscle separating the chest cavity from the abdomen is not fully developed or has a hole in it. The partial development of the hole causes the organs from the abdomen like bubble, stomach or liver to move up into the chest cavity. CDH is lesser known condition that is quite common throughout the world. David Y. E., the governor of the state of Hawaii started that day to raise awareness about CDH. What would 
it be like to have all the organs from our abdomen pushed into our chest? How congested would the lungs and heart be? Can you imagine the severity of such a condition? This is what a congenital diaphragmatic hernia is. CDH is a birth defect that results from an underdeveloped or malformed diaphragm. Unfortunately, there is a lesser known common condition that requires more attention. It is a life-threatening condition in infants that can result in death due to complications. Complications can arise in two major forms, pulmonary hypoplasia and pulmonary hypertension. It has a mortality rate of 40 to 62 percent. Dr. Lazare Rivere first described CDH in 1679 after he noted the condition during a post-mortem of a 24-year-old year person. Similarly, Dr. Luther Emmett Holt also described the clinical and post-mortem findings of CDH in 1701. The condition was further studied and described in various papers throughout the centuries, but the first successful Surgical treatment happened only in 1902. The advancement in neonatal medicine has increased the survival rate after surgery for infants. The advancement in ultrasound scanning technology has also made it easier for doctors to diagnose the condition at an early stage. This further helps to start treatment at the earliest and reduce risk. Pulmonary hypoplasia, plasia, and Pulmonary hypertension are two major cases, causes of uh, respiratory failure in infants due to CDH. These conditions can restrict blood flow to the lungs and can decrease lung volume significantly. Usually, the first stage of treatment is securing the airway through intubation. The malformation in the diaphragm is usually repaired through a technique called application of the diaphragm. The outcome of the surgery depends on various factors like the severity of complications, genetics, the size of hernia, etc. The overall survival rate in the US of a baby with the diaphragmatic hernia is approximately 65 to 70 percent. CDH is a medical emergency and will require immediate surgery and long-term medical care. Doctors can detect CDH by ultrasound as early as 16 weeks in pregnancy. Around 50% of the patches used for repairing CDH will recur, having high recurrence. Research shows that the, in the US alone, one in every 3,600 infants is born with CDH. 40 to 48% is the reported overall mortality rate for the CDH. Some studies claim that around 147 babies are born every day with CDH, the terrifying numbers. So the DIA is best used for sharing information about the condition. This information could save a few lives by making people aware of the long-lasting effects of CDH. Raising awareness can also help bring support and acceptance to those suffering from it. CDH can constantly, considerably affect the quality of life. The newborn baby should be properly treated before the condition causes complications and lasting damage. The day can push some serious momentum and energy to much needed medical research in the field. Early diagnosis is the key to reducing severity and effects of CDH, if not treated in time, the condition can be fatal for infants. This week is also commemorated as Undergraduate Research Week from April 19 to 23rd in US. April is a month of that produces university students across the US with the opportunity to shine with their progressive work during Undergraduate Research Week from April 19 to 23rd. Conducting research work does not have to be limited to your finals. Continuously researching on topics and forming numerous new hypotheses is the best way to aid in the evolution of the society. Keeping, you, keeping the youth motivated to make a difference is not easy, but it is not as an impossible task either. 
the initiative was started by the Council of Undergraduate Research, CUR, and the organization continuously strives to make efforts that lead to creation of scholarly ideas and groundbreaking research with the vision to help the advancement of society through creative undergraduate research. CUR assigned a week in April as Undergraduate Research Week. This initiative was initially pushed forward by the U.S. House of Representatives on the 16th of November 2010. This week was has become a national celebration during which numerous universities hold events exhibiting brilliant research studies conducted by undergraduate students of different institutes. This means not only will the studies be motivated to put an extra effort into their research throughout the year, but they will also be bestowed with the opportunity to have their voices heard. During the celebrity week, aspiring and brilliant students may present their ideas using various mediums, ranging from video presentations, detailed papers, from a performance or creative art display. All you need is to bring idea that stands out from the rest. It's a time to start brainstorming. So the University of Berlin is founded in the by Wilhelm Vaughan. Humboldt. It introduces a second mo sound model for undergraduate research in 1810 in the West. John Hopkins University in the U.S. introduces experimentation and research in 1876. The MIT Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, UROP, makes research projects in 1969. The Council of Undergraduate the Council on Undergraduate Research, CUR, is established, and this initiative that changed it all in 1978. There are 261 research universities in the U.S. The U.S. provides a J-1 visa for international students interested in studying and doing research. The Mashets Institute of Technology is the best undergraduate research university in the U.S. In 2019, the Department of Defense issued $3.51 billion to fund research programs. The faculty members at research universities are expected to partake in research and are required to publish research titles and articles. So this day or this week, can aid the groundwork for a new business venture and it keeps students motivated and it can help you change the world. Today is also commemorated as Texas Sandfest in US. It takes place every year over a weekend in April. It takes place uh, from April 19 to 21st this year. It is the biggest sand sculpting competition in the country. Scan sand sculptures from around the world come together to display their unique talents. It's began, it began in 1997 as a small local competition and has now become internationally recognized three-day family event that brings people from around the world to Port Aransas. The festival hosts a lot of fun events with live music, food, sand sculptures, kids' activities, shopping for arts and crafts, and more. Some charities benefit from the event. Students can also get access to scholarships. So the festival has served the community and is attended by many people. Texas Sandfest became a non-profit organization and it filed and received its 501c3 nonprofit status. It's began to work under a selected board of directors. People can take part in any activities that are held during the fest. They are also they also feel good knowing that several charities and people would benefit from the fest. Today, this week is also commemorated as National Environmental Education Week. 
from April 19 to 23rd in US. It's all about saving the planet. And this week gives us a child, uh, as a chance to make a change, be an environmental hero without superpowers. That is, throughout this week, the concept of environmental education is celebrated and ideas, projects regard how we can teach the next generation to be environmentally responsible are put forth. The week also takes a look on how modern society has damaged the globe. So National Environment Ed Environmental Education Week celebrated in April is a step towards creating a better tomorrow. Throughout this week, the Environmental Education E is promoted to introduce world to the benefits of incorporating E into the curriculum for students from a young age. Environmental education is a form of education taught in the primary and post-secondary grades that looks at how human beings can better manage their ecosystem by creating environmentally friendly solutions. E includes subjects such as biology, chemistry, physics, ecology, earth sciences, atmospheric science, mathematics, and geography all taught to create awareness about the importance of sustainable development. In 1972, the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment proclaimed EE as the best form of education that can be used to solve global environment problems. Since then, there was no turning back. Today, the National Environmental Education Foundation, formed in 1990, has taken it upon itself to continue observing national Environmental Education Week every year to inspire students, education, and learners everywhere to partake in projects and ideas that can change the world. It also serves as a platform that provides people with the hope for a better tomorrow. National Environmental Education Week is celebrated every year before Earth Day. Today is also commemorated as a starting from today till the entire week as National Dance Week from April 19th to 28th in US, which is an annual celebration. Dance was an important part of oral and performance methods of passing stories down from one generation to the next before the invention of written languages. So this week is specially set aside to spread the delight and joys of dancing and to create a awareness about its impact and benefits. Dance is a performing art, art form that consists of sequences of movements that are either improved or purposefully selected. This movement has aesthetic and often symbolic value and is performed to express happy emotions. Early dance date back to 3300. 3300 BC from the depiction of dancing figures on Egyptian tombs and discovery of 9,000 year old paintings in India at the rock shelters of Bimbetka. References to the dance can also be found in early recorded history. Dance is generally not exclusively performed with the accomplishment of music and may or may not be performed in time to such music. So this National Dance Week was founded in 1981 by the group of dance-related organizations to increase awareness about dance and its contribution to our national culture and bring greater recognition to it as an art form. The week is sponsored by the United Dance Merchants of America to increase public awareness and the appreciation of various forms of dance. Over the years, the organization dedication to its founding mission has inspired the events and initiatives taking place throughout the year. These reflect the unique and creative abilities of the individuals and organizations who participate, encourage, and take lead in an array of events, initiatives to celebrate dance in several unique ways. National Dance Week volunteers host more than a thousand events nationwide during the observation of scheduled activities for the week, including community, dance performance, free classes, and essay contests and attempts to break Guinness World Records in relevant categories. 
this week uh, today is also commemorated as national and global youth service days from april 19 to 21 in us it is an annual event observed on the second last weekend of april this day usually starts on friday and ends on sunday it is a day that originated in the us and was known as national youth service day presently more than 100 countries participate in the day making it largest annual celebration of young volunteers the day is now known as global youth service day millions of young people from all over the world spend this day in the service of their community and nation young people are an asset to every nation they decide the fate of the country in few years modern countries understand this and they all spend large sums of money to create better conditions and opportunities for their young people countries with a larger younger population have a better and brighter future this week is also commemorated as coachella valley music and arts festival from uh, april 19 to 21 so it will run for two weekends starting from april 19 to 21 on these designated weekends these festivities run from friday saturday and sunday the coachella valley music and arts festival is all about arts and music where live performances happen during the events it is held at the empire polo club in india california a place in coachella valley in colorado desert paul tolet and rick van santen started it in 1999 The festival is organized by Golden Voice, a subsidiary of AEG Presents. Coachella, uh, Coachella is one of the world's illustrious and most profitable music festivals. In 2017, around 2 lakh 50 thousand people attended the festival, and organizers made approximately. dollars 114.6 million apart from music they also created art installations and sculptures around 1997 golden voice was a, was struggling to book concerts against large corporations and companies and they were unable to offer guarantees as high as their competitors they brainstormed their options and the result was idea of a music festival they also thought of the idea for one with multiple venues and multiple performances performers were trendy artists who were not that much a chart success they foresaw a market they could capture and rest is history so the event is at empire polo club in indio california general admission cost you dollars 549 for the general pass with shuttle service it will be dollars 600 dollars 1190 there are spots where you can put up your tents and they can all, uh, they also come up with a parking spot Nobody is allowed to sleep in their car overnight. You need to apply for a camping pass. Music promotes well-being. It brings people together, and meet you. You can also meet your favorite artist. So, this week is also commemorated as Cloth Nappy Week, the reusable nappy week. which is held annually from april 19 to 25th this week aims to inculcate good habits in new parents where they can do their bit to the environment by using a cloth or reusable nap before they were disposable nappies and children were made to wear cloth nappies that were later washed with soap and water for many more reuses although tiresome to clean these nappies were good for the baby skin and did not add to the non biodegradable waste in the environment cloth nappy week reminds us the generations before us had meaningful habits and it's do us good to adopt a few of them
Cloth Nappy Week or Reusable Happy Week is an annual week of celebration observed every year from April 19 to April 25 to highlight the pros of using reusable nappies. We all turn to single nappies for our babies. However, the practice has grave consequences for the environment. In Europe, single-use nappies generate around 6,731 thousand tons of waste every year since the composition of these nappies is usually non-biodegradable along with the presence of organic matter after use recycling of single-use nappies are extremely complex and expensive. Therefore, in most countries around the world, single-use nappies end up in landfills or burnt. This leads to, leads to wastage of resources and pollution of land, air, water. So much wastage of uh, for a few hours of comfort. So think, but thankfully with the efforts of many environmentally conscious people, now we have eco-friendly, non-toxic and plastic-free nappies in the markets. Earlier, before this advent of these napkins, we used cloth. So similarly, these reusable cloth nappies are good not only for us, but also for the environment and reduces on waste generation pollute, and also preventing in pollution and also health hazards. One such reusable nappy cloth is cloth nappies. These nappies that have been proven to be environmental friendly, cost efficient and gentle on the baby skin, while some company, components is single use nappies can cause irritations to the baby there is emerging evidence that cloth nappies are safer for babies. Cloth Nappy Week aims to raise awareness, urges action from producers and suppliers, and enlightens parents on the many benefits of cloth nappies. So this is a week to revisit how things used to be and take use from our grandparents who could use cloth nappies for their babies, ensure a greener future for your babies by pledging to use reusable nappies in cloth nappy week. So you might be wondering how long does a cloth, uh, cloth nappy last? Once your child sleeps throughout the night, through the night, a highly absorbent cloth nappy will easily last 12 hours. So newborns to around three months can use uh, between 10 to 12 nappies a day. Most cloth nappies need changing every two or four hours and they should be changed as soon as the baby excretes in them. So this is how often you have to change a cloth nappy. If you have a baby, consider switching to cloth nappies and not using disposable diapers until absolutely essential. You can begin by using only cloth diapers using cloth nappy B. Cloth nappies make for great present to the new parents. On the cloth nappy B, gift new parents cloth on reusable nappies, which raise awareness while offering readily available alternatives to the parents. So celebrate cloth nappy week by giving shout outs to cloth nappy brands you can post on your social media or direct parents on these brands and even talk about how you like the products of these brands. So these disposable diapers are choking landfills. Diapers rank number three in occupying landfills. Disposable diapers may take up to 500 years to decompose and a baby uses up to eight diapers a day and need a lot of diapers. Parents spread, spend up to dollars 3000 every year on diapers and they are very expensive. And it may delay potty training by up to six months, those who are using diapers. So by switching to cloth, cloth nappies from disposable diapers, you adopt eco-friendly practices that ensure a green future for your children. Cloth Nappy Week promotes this good practice. If disposable diapers irritate your baby, Cloth Nappy Week has a solution for you. 
Switching to cloth nappies can be comfortable for babies and gentler on your skin. And this simple switch can significantly make your baby more comfortable. Raising babies is expensive. Cloth nappy week shows parents how to cut costs when available. Switching to reusable nappies can save thousands of dollars every week. Today is also commemorated as National Poker Week, which is the last commemoration for the day. So playing poker is a great way, of course, is a, uh, is a kind of gambling that it is not recommended because many people are losing money and their wealth. Of course, as a sport and game, if it is played, you know, it is healthy. But if you are investing and engaging money into that, then it's a serious addiction that can get you on the roads or uh, get you in the trap of Depths. So nothing beats a slow-paced game of cards for unwinding while having fun. You can also spice up things by playing or for higher stakes with friends. Put your skills to the ultimate test and get rewards for your expertise. Claim tournament prizes or simply enjoy bragging rights among your peers. So poker is a family of card games in which players take a bet on which the best according to the rules of the game in ways similar to the rankings. The earliest forms used only 20 cards. Now it is typically played with the standard deck. Though nations with short packs may use 32, 40 or 48 cards. While the historical roots of poker are unknown, many game scholars point to the French game book uh, with the Persian game Asnas as possible forerunners. However, the gaming historians such as David Parlett began to challenge the notion that poker is a direct descendant of Asnas in the 1900s. So card games actually according to the studies, are excellent brain stimulators that promote well-being. Previously, artwork painted onto the cards was extremely detailed. Over time, card manufacturers copied these vivid drawings and certain characters, character details were omitted. This explains why the king of hearts appears to be stabbing himself in the head when he isn't. Like all gambling games, luck plays a significant role in poker, particularly in the short term. On the other hand, poker is unlike any other form of gambling. Poker, unlike the other games on Casino Floor, is a game of skill and the world's top professionals make more money because they are the best players in the game. If you don't have a deck of cards, you can play one of the thousands of card games available online conquer the virtual world with style. You can al always interpret playing cards differently and have some fun. Build a card, house or invent your own card game. But don't engage in gambling. Red is for luck when playing poker. Many Chinese players wear at least one red item for good luck. Some superstitious poker players poker in filthy clothes for good luck. During World War, War II, the US government collaborated with a well-known card company to create a secret, uh, special secret card decks for American prisoners of war. Casinos have extremely high security measures in place to protect the cards they use requiring sign-offs before the deck is reshuffled. 
The United States Playing Card Company is world's largest manufacturer of the playing cards, the Ace of Spades. So a single deck of uh, 52 cards can lead to complex games that keep us entertained for hours. Even playing card games by yourself is a fun way to pass time. Playing cards is enjoyable and relaxing and it can be done indoors with family members. It's a great way to spend time with the family that doesn't require much effort. So finally, today is also commemorated as Sylvester the Cat birthday in the US. The whimsical cat who keeps on chasing a small birdie, he can never get in these cartoons. There are moments we can't help but the but root for him seeing how desperate he gets. We occasionally shared this frustration and felt for his failure. He also managed to help us laugh and forget our woes. What more can we ask from a cartoon? That's a dog cat and some speaking issues. So Sylvester's birthday is a big deal for all his fans. On this day, Television was a revolutionary invention back when it was first introduced in 1927. It introduced us to wonder of motion pictures. Then in 1948, the first cartoon on the television in the West, Crusader Rabbits, was released specifically for the television audience. The cartoon soon became a kid's favorite and the cartoon characters gradually conquered the television. In 1945, Fris Frilang officially introduced Sylvester to the world. His producer already appeared in Naughty But Mice in 1939. Sylvester spends most of his time changing, chasing Tweety and always failing. His catchphrase, suffering, Sakotash is, always, is also an unforgettable voice for more, most fans. This phrase is used as an exclamation of dismay and it has been said that what Sylvester is really trying to say is suffering savior. But his heavy tongue gets in the way. Sylvester almost always is portrayed as an antagonist. But there are episodes where he is showcased as a good guy. In others he is painted, he is paired with his son. For most cost cartoon watchers, Sylvester is an unavoidable part of their life. The laughter that we shared with our friends in those young days is still treasured memories for people. The thing about Sylvester is that he reminds us all of the time when we were chasing something similar to Tweety. We never caught Tweety, but we all reached somewhere just like Sylvester reached that loving embrace of Grand. So let's enjoy this day with the best of his shows. So with this, uh, we shall conclude commemorations of the day. Thank you everyone for joining us. So we request everyone to quickly fill in the feed feedback form, which has been raised in the form of polls. And from tomorrow, we'll be having conference. So we request, I mean, day after tomorrow, we'll be having psychology conference. And those who are interested to participate and present, you can register. And those who are interested to make presentations, you can register and also share the details as mentioned in the email and completing the formalities is mandatory for all the presenters to get your certificates so thank you everyone once again see you all tomorrow take care good night